Hi, I'm James Ward, a technical evangelist for Flex at Adobe. So we've been working with JBoss on creating some great ways for people to build Flex applications on top of the, the solid backend uh, provided by JBoss, the JBoss application server and uh, all the services in there. And uh, we've come up with a, a pretty cool demo that showcases how you can combine Flex with the JBoss application server. So I wanted to walk you through that demo and then show you some of the code behind it. So let's dive into Eclipse here. And uh, I've got four different Flex projects. And uh, I've got a common project for all the code that is common across the desktop, mobile, and web projects. Uh, and really, most of the code is, is in the, the common project. Uh, we're definitely reusing most of the code here uh, across these different um, devices and, and mediums. So, um, let's go ahead and launch this application first. We're going to run the web application. So this application that we built is just a simple whiteboarding application, collaborative whiteboarding application, and it uses uh, JBoss Application Server and Blaze DS uh, on the back end. So uh, to test this, I'm also going to run the desktop application. So this one is uh, built with uh, Flex and, and uses Air to run as a desktop application. And then let's also run the mobile application. So let's run this one here. Uh, so this is using the Flash Builder 4.5, um, which is codenamed Burrito. Uh, it's on labs.w.com to be able to build mobile applications with Flex. Um, so it's running that now uh, here on my mobile device. Let me pull up my, my camera so you can see it there. There it is. So this is a, a, a Galaxy Tab device. It's an Android device, and it has uh, Air, um, Adobe Air support on it. Um, so same application running here across uh, desktop application, mobile device, and web browser. So let's go ahead and actually log in to uh, the whiteboard. So I'm going to first enter my, my display name here in the web browser, uh, and then let's enter the whiteboard name B. And because I'm the, the first person to enter or create this whiteboard, uh, I just get let right in. Uh, but now let's go over to the desktop application and the display name over here, let's make it B, whiteboard B, and let's enter that one. And what you'll see is that uh, a request to enter the B whiteboard is pending approval. You also see that it notified um, the web browser over here uh, that uh, B is, is kind of pending. Um, so I can then choose to let B in. Um, but before we do that, let's let's go over onto the um, onto the Samsung Galaxy Tab, and this one will be C, and whiteboard is B. So let's now enter the whiteboard here. We'll see that our request is is pending there as well. Okay, so now let's um, start letting some people in. So let's uh, let let B in. That's the desktop application. So now I see that that B is allowed in. Um, C is still pending, um, but now I've got A and B here in the room. Uh, now let's go ahead and let C in as well. And now um, we're all in the room, uh, A, B, and C. Uh, and now we can start drawing. So each person can draw on their whiteboard. So here in the web browser, I can you know start drawing here, and you'll see that um, that line being um, pushed out to all the different uh, clients here that are connected. Uh, likewise, I can go over to the Galaxy tab and draw a line here, and we'll see that show up uh, on the um, the other devices. And of course, here in the, the desktop application, we can do the same thing. Uh, and so this is using a couple different features of Blaze DS. It's using the messaging feature to be able to publish and subscribe uh, to messages. Uh, and then it's also using remoting, uh, which is a, a really uh, kind of convenient and, uh, and performant way to send requests to the server from the client and, and get those responses back uh, in the AMF um, binary format, but still over HTTP. So this is a, a fun little application. It didn't take us very long to build. Um, now let's walk through some of the code actually behind this application. So here in Eclipse, uh, as you saw before, I've got my Flex projects all set up. Um, really, there's not much to the, the actual um, desktop, mobile, and, and web clients. Really, all that we're doing is creating an instance of this create or enter whiteboard component, uh, declaratively using MXML, and then a drawing board component, uh, and then having a little bit of interaction between those um, when we're actually let into the whiteboard. Uh, and so you'll see that the, the mobile client, very similar here. Um, similar code. Uh, I could have encapsulated this into a single reusable component and, and not had to have the same code there. Um, 
that would have been fine as well. Uh, and then I've got the web client. The web client does uh, pretty much the same thing as the desktop and mobile client, but because we're in the web browser, one of the other things that I wanted to do is actually change the URL when a user enters whiteboard. So you actually see over here, let's widen this up, see that it actually added the whiteboard ID uh, to this, and that would allow me to, to um, just reload my browser. Uh, now we've stored this, this whiteboard ID here, and now I can just enter back into um, this, let's do it as D, enter back into this whiteboard uh, and you'll see that it even persisted all the drawing commands, so I get what's, what's currently drawn in the whiteboard there. Um, and so, so it, uh, I was able to, to enter that whiteboard without having to send a, a request to the participants because I knew the ID. So that was a little convenient thing I wanted to do in the web version. So there's, there's a lot of uh, ActionScript and, and uh, MXML code behind these components to actually make all this work and make all the communication with the server work. Um, and I'll show you some of that in a minute. Um, before that, let me show you the structure here of the back end. So I've got um, four different projects for the back end. I've got the ear project, which is really pretty empty. Uh, it just has um, in it the libraries for Blaze DS. Um, and then I have the EJB project. This has my session beans in it and some data transfer objects. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then I've got the JPA project. Uh, this is where I have my Hibernate um, being set up. So these are my entities that I'm persisting in the database. Uh, and then finally, I've got the actual war um, project here. And the war project, uh, it really just has the actual compiled Flex application and its dependencies, uh, and then a config um, file to tell the application where to communicate with, uh, and then um, some other configuration for Blaze DFs. And so that's really all the setup here. So to give you an idea of, of how uh, this application was architected, um, let me walk through some of the code here. Um, so let me jump into this. Uh, this when, when somebody actually wants to enter a, a whiteboard or when we want to let someone into a whiteboard, let me show you what actually happens there. Um, I'll just show you just a snapshot of, of the overall application, but I think it'll give you a good idea of how these, how these two pieces, Flex and, and JBoss, tie together. So let's, in the drawing board, let's take a look down here. What we have is this, this pending attendees um, is, is where they get displayed. We're using a label uh, and then a group, and then inside the group, we're just drawing a little background there. And then we have the data group. And the data group is what's actually going to display uh, it, that let me in, or let um, the attendee name in um, when an attendee wants to join. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're just watching this pending entry request for changes. Uh, we do get those pushed, these pending entry requests pushed to us from the server whenever someone wants to, to enter the whiteboard. Uh, and then we're just using a item render here uh, to actually render this label that says let um, the attendee uh, in. And then um, last thing here is when uh, I actually click on that let someone in, it's what it's going to do is it's going to grab this connection to the server uh, using a remote object, and then it's going to call on the server this approve entry request method, uh, and it's going to pass it this entry request DTO, data transfer object. Uh, and so what's happening is this, of course, is running on the client side in all three of these cases, web, uh, desktop, and, and mobile. And so we have to have some way you know, to communicate, make this request back to the JBoss server. Um, so we're using BlazeDS to, to facilitate that, and the way that this works is I have my remote object uh, obviously written in Java. Let me show you first where, where we actually expose this remote object. So there's a blazeds config file here for um, to define our destinations that we want to allow someone to connect to. And so what I've created here is this entry request service and uh, told it the EJB uh, name to, to look up when it wants to, to uh, connect uh, to the, when the Flex wants to connect to this destination. So then, of course, that uh, EJB session being here is in uh, my, my EJB project, and that's just this entry request service. And so when we want to let someone in, uh, it's going to call this approve entry request, and you'll see that it's getting this entry request DTO back. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually going to get, using the Entity Manager, the actual entry request. And the reason why I'm using DTOs and Hibernate entities is that there's certain things that I actually didn't want to serialize that were in my Hibernate uh, beans. I didn't want to serialize those and send them out to the client for 
security reasons or you know to make the request smaller and so what i'm doing is i'm i'm just serializing and sending back and forth these dtos um, and then i i connect and map, map up my dtos to the actual entities so here i'm i'm looking up um, the the uh, entry request associated with this dto and then i'm just going to uh, send a message using blaze ds uh, out to all of uh, out to the attendee who i've just approved and so I'm using a subtopic here to specify that this message should only go out to uh, to that that attendee. And then the contents of uh, of this this message that I'm going to send out to it is just going to be the ID of the whiteboard. And essentially, that's the that's the key to allow someone to get into a whiteboard is the the primary key. Uh, and I'm I'm making those uh, primary keys non-guessable to to make it more secure. Okay, so, uh, and then once they're approved, I'm uh, removing that entry request. Uh, so let's take a look at how the actual uh, messaging happens now. So first on the, the server side in Blaze DS, I have this entry request um, destination, and this really just sets up uh, a kind of messaging channel that allows me to communicate between the client and the server, both publish and subscribe. Uh, and then I've, I've specified some parameters here. I'm gonna allow subtopics, uh, the subtopic separator is dot, and then I'm not going to allow people to um, to connect to wildcard subtopics, and that's just a, a security measure there. Um, so when I make this Java call to send this message, it's going to put this into this message queue in Blaze DS, and then on the client side, um, there's going to be the, the client sitting there waiting for this message. And so let's go take a look at how that actually happens. So here in the create or enter whiteboard um, flex class, MXML class, um, what's happening is I have this connection handler class. And this connection handler, um, what, what we're doing here is uh, making this, this connection, we're actually using an HTTP streaming connection uh, to nail open the, the connection to the server. And then whenever the server wants to send a message down to the client, uh, it can do that. And then I just get this entry request message uh, event and then I'm just going to make sure that, all right, this uh, looks like a whiteboard ID. So I'm going to set that whiteboard ID. And then I'm going to tell this client that it can enter the whiteboard. Uh, and so when I when it calls enter the whiteboard, it's going to make another remote request uh, to, to be able to actually uh, enter the whiteboard on the server. Uh, and then and then what comes back from that is, is actually not the data. Um, because this is an asynchronous request, we actually get a token back. Uh, and then we associate that token with this call responder down here. And that's when we can actually have a result event. So when this asynchronous request comes back from the server, then we can actually kind of set up the, the whiteboard and enter the whiteboard and those sorts of things. So uh, also broadcast that the attendee uh, list has changed so that everyone knows that someone new has entered the whiteboard. So that's just a, a, call, a small kind of snapshot walkthrough of how we built this whiteboard application uh, on Flex and JBoss. Uh, I think it's pretty cool, you know, to be able to very quickly build these applications that have a, a really strong back end uh, and then a great front end that works uh, not just in the browser on the, and on the desktop, but also now on mobile devices. Uh, so we'll be publishing some articles and some doing some webinars that go into more details about this stuff uh, in the near future. So uh, stay on the lookout for that. Uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.